Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and happy belated 4th of July to all you sweet people out there. Um, today we are going to be taking a container garden tour. We've done lots of beautiful containers this year already and so I wanted to give you an update on all of those various containers. So we're going to move around all the different places from here at the house and at the nursery to give you updates on them and I am going to share my successes and my messes with you things I've learned things that need to be done differently all of the fun fantastic things that we as gardeners love to talk about all right so here we are at the uh, shade garden right off of our house you can see the driveway right here this area does get morning sun until about um, maybe about noon and it's a little bit of a cloudy day today but what I want to share with you today um, over here are the hay racks window boxes whatever you want to call them I kept them really simple this year all three are the same they are planted with the lemon blush caladium and then the double delight primrose begonia which is a beautiful nice kind of a yellow peachy double begonia that is mounding and trailing so they are doing well this one right here at the kitchen sink window is doing nicely and then as we span over here you can see uh, the one on the wall as well is nice and full and thick and that caladium is just really knocking it out up there and is doing a great job all of these containers came from kinsman garden company uh, but look at that beautiful nice big beautiful flower on that double delight primrose begonia uh, interestingly enough this one over here um, I think you can probably see that we have one caladium that is an eager beaver I mean just much taller than the other ones that are in this container this one does get more sun so this caladium on the end gets more sun I have no idea if that's the reason why but they get the exact same amount of moisture they've been planted the same so that's an interesting little development right there um, yeah so that's the only thing I can think of is that maybe that corner gets a little bit more sun and that gives us the uh, the height difference there on, <laughs> on that sweet caladium all right while we're here we're gonna move on up because I shared with you a couple of weeks ago um, a little trick that I use when I am planting um, a container um, if you want kind of that instant impact in a container is that you take a hanging basket take the plants out of the hanging basket and then plant them in a container so that is what I did here at our sidewalk with the this is the super tunia mini vista white these were both hanging baskets i planted them in a um, just a container and then as a little tip go ahead and put a saucer underneath these because these are not on any kind of irrigation um, even with the irrigation with the lawn they do not get hit with that so i can come up here using my hose link water them so i water them both from the top and then i go ahead and fill up the reservoir as well I do that every couple of days and um, yeah so they are doing great they looked a little rough after we had <laughs> the week of six inches of rain but they're hanging in there and doing well all right moving up to the front porch because we've got containers up there as well here in front of the house we have a lovely front porch with our front porch and our back porch we spend a ton of time on our porches the uh, front porch gets morning shade afternoon sun so we come up here have morning coffee then in the afternoon we move to the back porch because it gets morning sun and afternoon shade so we just kind of rotate porches depending on uh, the season and where the sun is early spring I took you along for the journey of us planting our um, 24 inch massive huge hanging baskets that I have here on the front um, front of the house and full disclosure we had some issues as far as irrigation the plants were not coming along as i hoped they were um, and the container just did not turn out as well as i wanted it to just that would be my <laughs> full like full honesty right it just is not was not looking like i wanted it to and then when you couple that with irrigation issues um, they were just looking rough and i was not happy so i decided to pivot at the uh you know 
changed, right? You just keep your head on a swivel and you just keep on moving. Okay, we're gonna change it and figure this out. So what I did is I went and raided the greenhouse um, because I really think too, this area gets more shade than I thought it does. And the caliber coas were just not performing like they should. So I went and grabbed some angel wing begonias and then the diamond frost euphorbia. I literally just planted this like a week ago. So they are um, barely, I mean, they're growing, right, obviously. So we've gotten the irrigation fixed on those. Irrigation is fixed, so they're getting consistent water. Um, but also those begonias were really kind of like tall and leggy. So I really whacked them back. This is one that I will keep you updated on for sure. But those angel wings I put, so it's a 24 inch basket and I put four angel wings and four diamond frost euphorbias. Um, so they should get pretty large. If you have any experience with dragon wing begonias, you know that they get tall and they kind of trail over and they can get massive. So putting four in there plus four diamond frost, I was making up for lost time and I went for it. Another container that we did this season, this is, we did this relatively later on in the season, was this aquapot on our front porch. So here we have, this is an aquapot um, self-watering container from Proven Winners. We went ahead and planted it with the uh, black smoke bush and then this new begonia um, will be available next year. So this is the sister, shall we say, to the Double Delight Primrose. This is the Double Delight um, Apple Blossom. And it is doing really nicely. Um, we've talked about that this area gets a lot of shade. So I learned a trick from my friend Tracy over at Plaids and Poppies. And I put a grow light in my light here at the front door. I leave this on pretty much 24 seven and to get some really nice growth on that. Everything is filling in quite nicely. I'm very happy with that. Um, I have done water soluble fertilizer on the begonias one time. And then we have got some lovely new growth on the smoke bush in multiple areas. So that is really fun and exciting. Like that's a nice big new branch right here and then here in the back. So this is doing quite nicely. I think what I'm gonna do is move the smoke bush this fall. Once this um, container is kind of done for the fall, I'm gonna move it up to the chicken coop. Um, and so I'll have another smoke bush because I already have one. And then we'll have another one, different variety. And that'll be fun to have those. But the Double Delight Apple Blossom, which is available next year at Begonia, this whole little container is filling in quite nicely. This is, has it even been a month? I'm not even sure if it's been a month that they have been put together and looking quite nicely. All right, so we have done the front porch. Now let's go to the back porch and look at some really fun containers back there. Here we are at the back porch and we have several different containers that I'm gonna share with you. Uh, yeah, some are doing fantastic, some need a little help and some are ready to get booted out and get something else put in. All right, so we're gonna start first here with the two Weston urns that I have from Unique Stone on each end of the seating wall. I have a boxwood, sprinter boxwood in the center of each one. This is the Campfire Marshmallow um, Bidens that will be new next year. They are on the struggle bus. I am ready to kind of chunk them out. This particular urn had a bird nest in it. And so mama, it was a little sweet little wren. And so she had her nest right here, had her little babies. They have flown the coop and they are ready to go. So I couldn't really get in there and do a ton of work with them because of the babies but the heat has hit and they are done. You can see, especially on this one, we have lost a few. So I will be taking those out and I'll figure out what I'm gonna do in this, these, both of these urns um, in the coming days. Probably gonna take out the sprinters, save them, put them somewhere else, and then put an ornamental grass in those. So that is the update on that. However, I will say that I really did like these Campfire Marshmallows Bidens. They were really good. Um, they were stunning, especially uh, for the first couple of months. Now that the heat has hit, if you could probably keep lots of water on them, then they probably would be fine. Um, but just the way that we have our systems set up, it was really hard to keep enough water on these Bidens, but I do like them. I really did enjoy them. So they definitely get a thumbs up for me um, overall. 
next all right here we go not that these are specifically containers just wanted to give you an update while we're back here um, underneath the blue chiffon rose of sharon standard first of all can we just take a moment and appreciate how absolutely gorgeous and stunning that is I have two David Austins on each side of that, and then the white linen Terenia underneath it. Doing fantastic. So I guess you could kind of consider this a container because it's a it's a raised bed, but I honestly it's in the landscape, but I'm just I'm just gonna share that with you. White linen Terenia Catalina, Catalina White Linen Terenia. Love, love, love it. Um, the strawberry planter from Michael Carr with the Semper Vivums that I planted last year, doing just marvelous. If you notice your hen and chicks where they lose a little bit of their vibrancy, that's just because of the heat. Um, as soon as cooler temperatures come back, they will just pop with their gorgeous color. And then again, technically not a container, just wanted to give you an update. Look at these Supertunia Mini Vista Whites and then the Sun Patience behind it. Dear heavens, the look that I wanted is coming together. Absolutely love this. I mean, fantastic. So the Supertunia Mini Vista Whites were planted maybe 10 inches apart from each other as the Grande containers. And then the Sun Patience uh, Blush Pink, I believe there's two of those in there in each clump. And so they love the water, they love the heat, and they will continue to grow. I imagine that they will be kissing the top of the brick by the end of the summer, but just doing great. And they're doing great on um, this side as well. So everybody here is doing great within uh, the slash slightly container. And then the two hanging baskets that we have up here, these are gonna be new begonias uh, from Proven Winners next year. This is the Selenia series. I believe the Selenia series has been a Proven Selections, but they're gonna bump it up and move it to the Proven Winners line. There are three um, plants in each of these baskets. So let's see if I can uh, mosey on up the steps here and give you a little bit of a, of a better um, view of those. These get morning sun and then, oh gosh, I would say maybe four to five hours of sun and then they are in the shade. I have simply just watered them every couple of days. They are not on irrigation, but have done really, really well. I am thoroughly enjoying this Selenia Yellow. It is a beautiful container. Um, and we also have some of them in the deck boxes over here that I'm gonna show you in a second. I did a arrangement of just caladiums right here. This is a shade caladium and it's doing great. Finally, it, it kind of sat for the longest time, but caladiums do love it hot and humid. So <laughs> while other containers were like, oh my gosh, it's hot. The caladiums were like, yahoo, the heat has arrived. So they are just pushing and just doing great. I do need to go ahead and take that container and just flip it around because they are kind of stretching a little bit towards the sun. So every couple of weeks, just rotate it. And um, that way you get nice, even, even and uh, growth on that and will do really well for you. All right. Another container that we did right here, um, this is a mostly shade container. This too had that same caladium. It has got the Double Delight Primrose Begonia again. You can tell that I used that in multiple places in the garden this year. Um, so that was in there. Then we have the Infinity um, Impatient. So this is more of a shade impatient than a sun impatient. Uh, of course, the sweet potato vine, it is definitely the star of the show right here, doing great. White Terenia um, in there as well. Full disclosure, when uh, the heat hit, because if you're um, here in North Carolina, I'll just, I can only speak for where I am. We had an unseasonably cool spring, early summer. Like it was, we were getting consistent rain. It was cool. We did not have the crazy heat that we typically have. And then it was like the very end of June, beginning of July, and the heat has hit big time. We as gardeners are like, <sighs> because we're not acclimated to the heat and neither are our plants. So we have had to massively adjust our watering and the plants were kind of freaking out a little bit. Um, so we've had some struggles, I'm not gonna lie. Um, we've had some struggles on keeping up with the watering and figuring out the new watering schedule with the heat. 
bless this sweet little thing's heart. Um, it's probably getting the roots are very vigorous and probably really filling in. And I missed a day of watering where I should have watered and I didn't. I don't water this every day. I'm probably going to have to start doing that. But I looked out the window and I realized that my impatience were completely like shriveled up and dry and that is never a good thing so um they took a hit they're coming back and then the terminia took a little bit of a hit too um so it is coming back as far as blooming again so it kind of went into ship shock but we're coming back and it'll be fine uh, fertilizer consistent water it'll be great same thing over here with the deck boxes now Overall, I am extremely happy with how this space has done. It has filled in gorgeous. If you remember from that video, when I planted it, we had lots of empty space uh, because I had a feeling that these were gonna be vigorous plants. Well, they are. Um, this is the new Superbina for next year. This is pink Superbina pink chenille. Really nice, nice big heads. You will notice though, I have a lot of um, blooms old blooms that took a hit in the watering issue that we were dealing with because these deck boxes are tied to the same zone as the front porch hanging baskets and then because the system um, the root system rather on these plants is super vigorous right so if you've got these massive amount of plants you can only imagine what the root system is like had some struggles with the heat because this is all day hot sun and so we took a hit they're coming back consistent water and they will be just fine but um yeah so they're not looking primo right now but i really do love how this has turned out and don't you love see look 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 this is exactly what i had envisioned right so you've got that blue chiffon rose of sharon peeking out you've got the hot pink of the rose um, the sunstar rose penta You've got the creamy yellow and the white, and then all that works together. I love it. So what we have in here is Mini Vista White. Y'all, I'm telling you, Super Tunia Mini Vista White. Great, fantastic plant. Of course, the new pink chenille for next year. Then the yellow petunia that you see, that too is new for next year. That is the Super Tunia Saffron Finch. Love it. Of course, Mini Vista White. Then we've got the Sunstar Rose Penta doing really well. I've got the same Sun Impatience that I have below and they took a really, like, as you know, Impatience, if they get dry, um, they don't like that. <laughs> Neither does Verbena. So these two are a little bit on the struggle bus. They will bounce back. Consistent water and they will be just fine. Um, there is in here, um, plum dandy <laughs> it has gotten swallowed up and then there is also in here um the selenia yellow begonia so it is getting swallowed up as well um i'm not super unhappy about that because everything else is doing just fine you can see a little bit of the plum dandy um, sticking out right here and then on the back side we have the silver dichondra silver falls that is flowing over so even though it took a hit with the uh, lack of water and the heat uh, they are doing really well love how these have filled in all right let's walk around the patio area because i got a couple of containers i'm going to show you there right off of the patio right so here we are the pathway back porch right there we did a container of just the new this is the super bells um, this is the pink improved it is doing well it is in need of a dose of fertilizer but for how it has handled this heat and is not on irrigation it's only been getting water um, from the rain it is doing really really well happy with that um, it does need <laughs> it does need some fertilizer all right we're going to keep on walking right through here look at this beauty oh my goodness y'all is this not fantastic so another uh, unique stone container this is the rectangular hummingbird um, container and we have yet again those same sun patients i try to repeat those plants so that my garden ties in together so we've got those sun patients in the blush pink we have the um, Trefala Pink Gum Frina, one on each end, doing really well. And then yes, again, we have the Catalina White Linen Terrinia in there. This is not on irrigation, so I do have to hand water it, but yeah, it is doing great. 
love this and I love that it gets morning sun, about half day sun, half day uh, up until lunch and then in the afternoon it is in shade and it is doing super, super well. All right, let's move on over here because uh, we've got some containers right over here. I'm gonna show you those. It is time for me to, uh, <laughs> I've got to come back through and do a little bit of the training on the old uh, Generous Gardener. She's getting a little out of control. The Sempervivums in the bird bath, doing great, hanging in there very nicely. Here on the window of the garden shed, I did the Goldilocks Rocks Bidens. So that is the yellow. They're on the struggle bus, not gonna lie. And then the Osteo, this is the Bright Lights Purple um, Osteospernum. So they, they're hanging in there, but the heat is getting to them. Um, I'm thinking I might switch this out and put some Portulaca. We'll just see how they do. But this is definitely taking water every single day, hand watering that. And then here we have our collection of, um, oh gosh, not a trio, uh, a lot of pots right here that they are all doing quite well. The ones that I have been super impressed with are, um, of course, the purple fountain grass, the Atlas Rose has done really well, as has the lavender. Um, this is the Super Bells, it's the double white. This will be new next year here on, for that, it has done well. And then this is a Cedar Rapids. And I have been super impressed with this. This has had some massive growth. This will actually be a tree. Um, and so it will be like a shrub tree form, but really a ton of growth. This does get hot all day sun. Super excited about these guys. Might be adding, because I have two more, might be adding them at least one up near the chicken coop. So everything here is doing well. Just having to keep water on it because this area does get lots of hot, afternoon sun so water 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 that is the name of the game for now all right let's see other containers i think we're going to head on over to uh, the nursery and we're going to give you some updates over there we cannot do a container update without talking about the fantastic the infamous water trough here at the barn oh my goodness i love this it has turned out really really well we did not do a video when i planted this um, i was just here at the nursery one day and i just threw it together yet again this container was inspired by my friend tracy from plaid and poppies because tracy is just known for her big beautiful bold color sister is not afraid to use color in her garden and i love that so what we have here um, is a beautiful assortment of gorgeous color. Okay, so we're gonna kind of, um, each side, I try to keep it balanced, right? So each side is planted the exact same so that the container um, does make a statement because it is here in front of the barn and we had to get the biggest, this is just a livestock water trough and Jerry got it at our like feed and seed livestock supply company, right? Just down the road. It does not have holes in the bottom. It does have a drain plug on the back side, about an inch or two from the bottom that is open. So it does drain and it is filled completely with soil um, all the way down to the bottom. Every year when we rip out the plants, of course we lose soil. So then every year we have to add probably after a summer planting like this, we'll have to add maybe five more bags of potting soil and or compost to kind of redo it. We have never completely emptied it of all the soil, but it does have soil in it all the way. Here in the center, our, uh, our thriller for this container is the new sweet potato vine from, all these are from Proven Winners. Um, this is the Climbing Sweet Potato Vine. This is the Upside Black Coffee. This is one plant. Yep, one plant, my sweet friends. There is an obelisk in there. Uh, you might be able to see the, the top of that. Uh, it took a minute for it to get going, but once it did, Oh my goodness. So there you go. This thing will climb anything. Then we have uh, the rockin' uh, fuchsia. Pretty sure this is, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is the salvia. Sorry, I got distracted. There was a hummingbird that came flying by and uh, so I got distracted. Yes, this is the rockin' fuchsia salvia, a huge pollinator attractor. If you can see, there's a little honeybee in there. And then, like I said, a hummingbird, uh, she, she was trying to come to feed and I was in her way. Not only do we have the fuchsia 
salvia. We also have um, the vermilionaire, and vermilionaire is a kufia. It is a massive hummingbird attractor, um, also pollinators. So my honeybees, my bumblebees love it. Those little orange tubular flowers are great attractors for those sweet little friends. So got those on both sides. Then we have the new, this is for next year. This is a trailing coleus. This is cherry drop and cherry drop is a trailing coleus, but that, what they do is they do go up and then they begin to spill over. So really nice, pretty pink um, colors in there with some green. And then down here in the front, we have got the Super Bells blue. We have the Super Tuyen Mini Vista Sangria, and then the Whirlwind White Scavola. All of that kind of coming in, those nice colors that are my spillers. They complement each other really well. I do have multiple plants um, in each group of those, so I'm not sure exactly on my numbers on that, but it's not just one plant. Like I planted, pro there's probably three at probably three in each group of those um, to give you an idea on that. Originally, I put a Suncredible Sunflower in here. They did not do well. We have struggled with Suncredibles this year in certain areas, not sure why. So I got a little panicky and I put in a Penta where the Sunflower was. I probably could have just pulled it out and not thought about, worried about it because everybody else is taken off in the heat. So back here is that Sunstar Rose. Um, but like I said, I probably should have just pulled out the Suncredible and just left it because everything else is spilling in and you don't even see those pentas. But that's all right, you live and you learn, right? So this one is doing amazingly well. I love it. Um, it gets morning sun and then it is in the shade from about one o'clock for the rest of the day. So half day of sun, but it's still that six hours. So it is considered a full sun container. Love it. All right. Let's move on to another area. Here in the display garden, right in front of the pergola, um, we have a huge, unique stone bowl. This is called the Asian Water Bowl. And we have a, this is a little lime standard. So it's a little lime tree, hydrangea, sorry, little lime hydrangea standard, which means it is in a tree form. And then underneath it, we have the Super Bell's um, pink, let's see, Super Bell's Prism Pink Lemonade Calibricoas. There you go. Uh, that was a mouthful. So everybody is doing really well. The little lime is about to just absolutely explode into color. Um, yeah, so massive container right there. That is not on irrigation. We have to hand water it, but that is looking really, really well. And then there is a uh, shade container. There's actually two shade containers here at the nursery that I'm really excited to show you here at what we call the outhouse. It looks like an outhouse. It really just hides our electrical panel. I have a container that is meant to be a planter. Looks like a bird bath. This is predominantly shade. So I did a mixture of, this is still that uh, cherry drop coleus. So you can see <laughs> upright and trailing a bit. But so we have that. There is a Pegasus begonia back here in the back. Then we have the Double Delight Begonia again, White Terinia, White Linen Terinia, um, the Lemon Blush Caladium, and then the Stained Glass Hosta. So everybody here is doing well. They probably could use um, a little bit more fertilizer because I noticed that my begonias um, not quite as green and so neither is the Terinia, but there you go. Overall doing really, really well. And then people were asking about the wheelbarrow so here is the wheelbarrow we have an old wheelbarrow that we always plant right here at the bridge going across to the pines this is going to be considered full sun this is opposite than the water trough in the fact that it's in the shade in the morning and gets hot afternoon sun so what we have back here is this is the unpl unplugged pink salvia in the back then we have the lobularia this is the sky blue um, really nice soft soft blue Super Tunia Mini Vista Indigo, nice trailing. And then we have the Blushing Princess um, White Alyssum that is doing well. So the, the wheelbarrow is uh, full and doing quite nicely and just looks fantastic. We have a little collection pots. I didn't show you this, um, but we've got some of the Senorita, um, Rosalita Cleome, a white sun patient, plum dandy, um, the little petunias in there. Um, so just doing a little collection of pots right here. One that I'm really excited to share with you because again, we did not, uh, 
I don't show you everything that happens around here because I would just need a film crew following me around if we showed you everything that happens. Um, but one day when the nursery was open, my mama was here helping me and you know she's my little She's my partner in crime, and so we um, commandeered a unique stone trough that had not sold. So here we have one of the unique stone troughs. We planted the, um, the new Double Delight Apple Blossom Begonia. There are three of them in there, and they are beautiful. I paired it with the Pink Chablis Lamian that has been in here for several years and um, this is doing great. I think it's doing so wonderful because it gets dappled sunlight and it is underneath a sprinkler. So lots of beautiful water on this. Uh, not really a lot of fertilizer, just good consistent water. Of course, we used um, great potting soil, the Proven Winners potting soil, and some land and sea compost, but this whole little container is great. This does get like filtered sun. It is not a, um, definitely not full shade and it's definitely not even close to being full sun. Dappled and it is just doing fantastic. All right, I got a couple more to share with you and then we're gonna wrap it up for today. But again, could not do this video without talking about container gardening, without talking about the uh, refrigerator. So if you notice the theme here, especially over at the nursery, I tend to do very like whimsical uh, containers. Like I have a wheelbarrow, I have a water trough, I have a refrigerator, I actually have a grill. We didn't plant the grill this year. So if you're asking about the grill, we don't have the grill planted this year. Um, but yeah, so we have fun, right? Use what you got, people. So a friend of mine gave me this refrigerator. We turned it upside on its back, on its back flipped it open. Um, the lid is uh, will not come down, but we have a drinking gourd hosta in here. It has stayed in here for a couple of years and it is doing well. You can see that we probably need to come in here and prune back. These are the where the blooms were. The drinking gourd hosta is known because it has those big, beautiful cupped leaves. When it gets rained on or gets watered, it will hold the water right there. Um, but yeah, it is doing really well. That is the only thing that is planted in the refrigerator itself. And then off to the side, we have, this was like the, the vegetable drawer. And so we planted it. This is a test plant that we're trying out. Um, one of the, another grower gave us these. This is the Iconia lemon berry begonia. And they are doing quite nicely. They like this area filtered sun, more on the shade side, but a nice new, it's kind of a different, has a very similar, let me back up, has similar flowers than like the Double Delights, not quite as thick, but it has a different leaf on it, more um, angular, more triangular, more serrated. Um, so yeah, this was just something fun that we were trying out, but yeah, this is the, let me show you the tag up here, the Iconia Lemon Berry Begonia. All right, and then, I know y'all may think, oh, Jenny, you got your Galloway urn. No, this one's still for sale. We just plopped a fern in it so uh, <laughs> for structure. So there you go. And then over here, we have an aquapot. We did a video for Proven Winners back in the spring. And this is an aquapot, definitely, obviously, in the shade, right? So <laughs> you can see that the Rocapuco wisteria is very happy, uh, just growing by leaps and bounds looking great we've got the pulmonaria in here this is i believe this one is the um pink and blue so it is doing well look at hudson bay the hosta shadowland hudson bay hosta is in there doing quite nicely and then off to the side then we have a euchara and this is the wild berry i want to say it's either wild berry or frosted berry i want to say it's wild berry um so yeah, so it doesn't matter if you have, <laughs> if you have full sun, full shade, something in between, you can come up with a container um, to give you beautiful structure and interest to your garden. And that's the great thing too about containers. Like for example, this one right here, this aqua pot, um, there is no way really let's just be honest that I can have those plants in the ground right there. Right? So, here we are, high traffic area, and there's gravel right there. It's not on irrigation. I've got seating right here for folks at the nursery, but yet this brings in a welcomed area for folks. You get to see the flowers, and you have a beautiful 
arrangement of flowers in here. It brings structure, it brings height to your garden. Um, so don't ever, ever underestimate the power of having a beautiful container in your garden. I hope you have found this fun and informative and inspirational. And that's another great thing about um, containers. Even though it is July and it's hot, you can go ahead and plant a container and they will do really, really well. Like you, just like with my hanging baskets, I wasn't happy. They looked, they looked bad. They were not doing well. And Brenna is trying to take a stick off of the uh, burn pile. Crazy dog. I digress. But even if something is not doing well, you can replant a container and it will, it will come along really, really quickly. So that is a great option for you. So that way you can continue to plant throughout even the heat of the summer and add new plants to your garden. Don't ever be afraid to say, this is not working. Let's fix this. Let's change something and let's go in a different direction. It's fantastic. All right, my friends, as always, thanks so much for growing with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends. Oh my goodness, y'all. Clearly the heat is getting to me because we did not talk about these aquapods. So really quickly, let's go over these aquapods here at the pergola. I don't know what I was thinking. Clearly I was not. Maybe I need another cup of coffee. Maybe I need an iced coffee because it's toasty out here for sure. All right, so these are two nice, big, beautiful aquapods. These are the companion pieces to the one that I have on my front porch. You saw us plant them and dear heavens, are they not beautiful? So let's talk about what is in here. For the thriller, we have uh, the graceful grasses. This is the skyrocket grass. This is a potential one that I could replace uh, the urns on the back patio, right? So I could put just this in there and it would be beautiful. We have more of the Truffula Pink Gum Frina that is just that beautiful. Brings a whole different texture, but it's hot, right? So it's very, it fills in right there. More of the um, Lobularia. This is the compact blue with eye. I believe so a nice really kind of a dark rich blue with that white eye center and then the two petunias so we have um, the new super petunia saffron finch that will be available next year and then the new and improved bermuda beach so bermuda beach next year if you buy it it will be this one bermuda beach is not a new super petunia but they improved it so really kind of bigger bolder colors on it but just look at that Earlier uh, last, well, last week, I went through and came and just trimmed up some of the bottom because they were getting a little long um, and I want them to stay nice and thick and full in here. But yes, beautiful, beautiful container. Uh, Aquapots make life so much easier here in the South because you can have a container, you can fill it up once a week instead of having to be out here in the heat of the summer having to water them twice a day because you know whether you're in the south or where you're where it's hot and at the end of the summer when you've got big huge plants like this that have massive root systems and the temperature is hot you have to stay on them and water them religiously otherwise they go downhill really fast aquapots take all that out and make it so much easier all right now we're done See y'all next time. Bye friends.